Hey everyone, today I have my hands on the brand new Tamron 28 to 300 millimeter f4 to 7.1 lens. We're gonna be taking a hands on look at this lens for both photo and video, and we're gonna start off at a portrait session. So let's go. Starting off with like a bit of like a headshot. For today's photo shoot, I'm using the lens on the full frame Sony a7 IV, and I'm gonna share photos from various focal lengths throughout the lens. All the photos I'm sharing will be unedited first at 100% crop, so you can take a look at all the details and afterwards my edited version. I decided to edit these photos with my disposable film preset pack, which I'll leave linked in the description if you want to use it for your own photos. I also have a few photo comparisons to different zoom lenses from Tamron and other brands I'll share throughout. These were taken on different days, but I picked similar focal lengths and compositions for you to compare. My first impressions of this lens when I open the box is, wow, this is small. Considering the huge 10.7 times focal range this lens offers, it weighs only 610 grams and is only 12.6 centimeters long when zoomed out to 28 millimeters. As you can see from these shots, it's really unobtrusive on the a7 IV and unassuming. It doesn't look like a lens you can zoom to 300 millimeters with. This lens has an aperture range of f4 to 7.1, features external zoom, a zoom ring, and focus ring. There is a zoom lock switch, customizable button, a USB-C port, 67mm filter thread, and is moisture resistant. It's great to see this lens has vibration compensation as well. Oh, I like that. That's nice. That looks really cool. I'm getting a bit more of a close-up shot here. I like actually don't have to move. In one spot, I can get like full body and headshot. <laughs> so easy. Oh, that's really cool. Now that you've had the chance to take a look at some of the photos I've taken so far, let's talk about image quality. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the image quality coming from this lens. It produces nice, clear photos where you can see plenty of details throughout the entire focal range, which is great to see. Sometimes very long zoom lenses will struggle on either the widest or longest end of the lens where the images are not quite as sharp, but this lens keeps a consistent image quality. That magpie is fully just watching on. It's very cute. Is, is this very interesting? I think it might be a butcher bar. They're usually really friendly. Oh, I mean, they're cute. <laughs> Love that. Autofocus is also snappy and consistent across the entire focal range. I will have some autofocus examples to take a look at when we test out video a little later on. And then do you want to also sit with your legs towards me too? For the time being, you can keep an eye on the picture in picture to see how the lens is performing during our photo shoot. While this lens produces good results, I do want to manage expectations here and mention this is not GM quality glass or sharpness. This is a lens where the primary focus is focal range and physical size. I can see this lens being a really good option for photography enthusiasts, beginners, and people who want one lens that can do it all, but is also easy to carry around, maybe for travel or daily photos, for example. Since we have a high aperture range of f4 to f7.1, this is not necessarily a lens you would purchase if you want to create photos with a shallow depth of field and lots of bokeh in the background. In saying that, depending how you position your subject against your background and what focal length you're using, you can create some photos with that look, which I did a lot at the beginning of this photo shoot where I kept rows far away from the backdrop and was shooting with a focal length of 100 millimeters and over. If you wanted to like tuck your hair behind one ear, you could kind of do like some angled shots too. Yeah, oh that's so nice. You've got a great profile. <laughs> This lens features nine circular diaphragm blades and the bucket is nice and round at wider focal lengths and starts forming more of an eye shape around the 200 to 300 millimeter mark. The bucket is quite textured when you zoom in to take a closer look at it and this lens has a maximum aperture range of f22 to f40. 
Photos with lots of bokeh is not everyone's aim, and I have to say, even though dreamy photos is usually my style, I still really enjoyed using this lens for portraits. Even at wider focal lengths and with the background closer to rose, there is still a small amount of background to foreground separation to help the subject stand out. All right, amazing. And we should move spot as much as I love this spot. <laughs> Could stand in this little spot here. Oh, you've got a bit of sun on your face. Are you able to, if you move back a little bit, now you're in the shade. Overall, I'm really happy with the final look of the images. This lens, in my opinion, has quite a bit of character and Tamron achieved a good balance with the lens size without cutting too many corners on image quality. Since there is a high aperture range, something to keep in mind is you will either need to make sure you're working in bright lighting conditions or you have a camera that looks clean at higher ISOs. As you can see from my settings, the lowest ISO I used is 640 and we were taking these photos around 1pm on a blue sky day. The reason I did this is to make sure I'm using a fast enough shutter. The longer your lens, the faster your shutter speed needs to be if you're shooting handheld. With IBIS from the a7 IV and BC from the lens, I was able to capture many photos that are tack sharp with no motion blur. I feel like it would look cool if you stand just here. This lens has quite a significant lens flare and a fair amount of ghosting when it comes to taking photos in backlit situations such as here where we have the sun streaming into the lens. If you can get just the right amount of sun into your frame, it looks quite nice. There's this soft glow happening in that spot, but the majority of the time I find the lens flare and ghosting to be quite distracting personally. Here are some examples of what I captured. This lens has a pretty good handle on chromatic aberration. There is no bright colored fringing in any of the shots. In some photos with harsher light hitting Rose's hair, you can see some subtle CA. It's mostly only noticeable when you zoom in to look for it though. And then should we do some without the jacket as well? Yeah. So Tamron have quite the lineup of super zoom lenses for Sony full frame, a few of which I have reviewed and I'll leave them linked in the description if you wanna watch those videos. So let's take a quick look at focal length and weight comparison between all of them. We have the 28 to 200 millimeter f2.8 to f5.6, the 50 to 300 f4.5 to 6.3, which I am working on a review of and will upload this soon. So please let me know if you have any specific questions you want answered in that video. There's also the 50 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3, the 70 to 300 f4.5 to 6.3, and the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8. I really like that whole thing as well. Yeah, this is cool. I feel like if you wanted to stand like just here. Let's see. Oh, I might need a shoot from here. Ooh, this is nice. In terms of the most similar comparisons, first is the 28 to 200. With this 28 to 300 we're looking at today, we have an extra 100 millimeter reach on the long end, but on the downside, a smaller aperture range starting at f4 versus 2.8 and f7.1 versus 5.6 on the longest end. They are a very similar weight at 575 versus 610 grams and a very similar length at 117 millimeters versus 126 millimeters. If you ignore the price difference, one of the main features to consider when deciding between these lenses is do you want longer reach or a larger aperture? The next comparison I want to talk about is between the 50 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3. Here, the aperture range and price are much more similar, but the 28 to 300 offers a wider field of view, which makes it more of a can do everything lens. In comparison, the other lens starts at 50 millimeters, which is already considered a standard or mid tele focal length but has an extra 100 millimeters available on the long end. The 50 to 400 however is almost twice the weight at about 1.1 kilos. Maybe I do need to make an ultimate Tamron super zoom comparison video to take a closer look at all of them side by side. Regardless, it's great to see Tamron are working on giving us greater focal ranges in their lenses while also focusing on size and weight. If you want to stand just here. So I'm going to take a photo at every single focal length of this lens with both Rose and I standing in the same spot so you can see the focal range. So I'm going to start off on the widest end, which is 28 millimeters. This time I'm gonna start on the zoomed in end and I'm gonna frame each photo to look the same. So as I zoom out, I'm gonna walk towards Rose. Okay. And here at 28 millimeters, I am super close up to my subject.
finally, let's take a look at some autofocus examples in video mode. The 28 to 300 makes use of linear focus motors, and as you can see, it does a really good job at keeping up with the subject throughout the entire focal range. I tested autofocus at 28 millimeters, 135 millimeters, and 300 millimeters. These autofocus tests are again on the Sony a7 IV. I have the camera set to a wide focus area, IAF and responsive autofocus, and I'm just letting the camera and lens do all the work so we can see its performance. The autofocus is very snappy when it jumps between close focus distance to the subject which is further away. It's really impressive watching it actually. It also has no problems keeping focus on a subject moving towards or away from the camera, which is again, so impressive, especially on the 300 millimeter end. You can absolutely rely on this lens in terms of autofocus and the performance you see here in video mode is the same performance I had in stills during the portrait session. That is all I have for today's review on this Tamron 28 to 300. Let me know what you think in the comments and which ones were your favorite photos. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.